Hi, I'm Susan Campbell, and welcome to my cooking series. It's called Essential Cuisine, A Journey from Seed to Soul. And the reason that I named it that is because Essential Cuisine is all about the elements that are essential in the way we eat. From the way our food is grown, to how it's harvested and how it's processed, if it is processed at all, and how it just completely comes to your plate and what it does for your body, how it makes you feel, and how it grows your body, gives you vitality, gives you strength, and gives you pleasure. I often say it's all about food that nourishes the body and pleases the palate. And through the series, I'm going to offer you some education about these different foods that we're going to be working with the entire time. The reason I named uh, the journey um, up from seed to soul, too, was because I got so involved in the way that um, our seeds are grown and got involved in our agricultural practices. And I started to realize that there is such a difference in the way that foods are milled and how oils are processed and pressed and how food is grown, what kind of soil it's grown in, how the animals are treated, like in dairy products, what are they eating, and what kind of medicines are they being given, and what kind of manufacturing or processing is taking place. It affects the way the food ends up in your house. And so that, that's the journey from the seed to the soul that we're going to cover as we go through this entire series. And the soul part, well, that's all about how good it tastes because it just warms my soul when food tastes good. I love food and I love good food. And believe you me, when you start trying these foods with some of these ingredients, you're going to notice the difference in the taste. Now, a few of the focuses that we're going to highlight in this series, I'm going to point out to you now while we have all these products in front of us, but we'll take our journey through the series and we'll be using some sometime and others another time. Now, first of all, I want to talk about essential fatty acids. This is flax oil. It's very high in essential fatty acids. These are flax seeds, these tiny little black or dark brown seeds. Now, essential fatty acids, you probably heard a lot about them, Omega-3s, omega-6s, and omega-9s, those all are encompassing or names of different essential fatty acids. Now, essential fatty acids are essential. They're essential for our cells to function properly. And our bodies don't make them. The only place we can get them is through food. So if you're not eating a diet that's rich in plant foods, then you're not probably getting enough essential fatty acids because essential fatty acids came from the plankton in the sea and the grass that's grown and in all your vegetables and seeds and there's, there's different variations of the balances of them but it can be pretty complicated so I'm going to try to make it very simple for you. We are going to use this particular flax oil which has been milled um, at a very very low temperature and very fresh and that's why it tastes so good. It's often used as a supplement because Americans were devoid and deficient in, in their essential fatty acids, so they started supplementing their diet. But you know what? This is not a supplement. Well, it is, but it's a delicious food, and I'm going to show you how we can make great sauces and dressings to liven up vegetables. And many people have told me, as I have gone along and, and um, been teaching all about food, They've said, what do I do with vegetables? And I says, well, let me show you. There's so many simple, simple ways to make vegetables, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. And vegetables not only grow on top of the earth, they grow in the ocean. Sea vegetables, another great source of essential fatty acids, not to mention minerals, which most of us are also devoid of. Not only do we want to take a look at our vegetarian foods or our vegetation and our seeds, and we also want to take a, a strong look and a very close look at dairy products. Organic pastures here, they are not fed any antibiotics. They are only, um, when, they're, when they're sick, they only use homeopathic medicines. And the best part about these cows is that they're grass-fed. And the second best part about this milk, cream, butter, and cheese, is that it is not pasteurized. And you'll learn more about the safety of that food when we get along, uh, go along in the series just a little bit more. Let's see, what else do I want to tell you? I want to tell you about live foods. These are vegetables that have come from the earth, and yet they have been um, ground up, and we're going to learn how to do this later in another segment, but they have been ground up and fed a culture, which is 
what we call probiotic cultures, which is all about your acidophilus and your bifidus, which we call friendly bacteria. But what happens to these foods is they become alive. Many of you are probably used to hearing about sauerkraut. Well, that's what sauerkraut is, is actually a cultured vegetable. But these, there's something special about them. They have not been cooked and they have not been pasteurized, so they are alive with enzymes. We're also going to be taking a look at some of our breads. We have a loaf here from French Meadow Bakery. Many of your breads today are made with wheat berries or flax or hemp seeds, uh, spelt, and different kinds of seeds that are sprouted and then slowly baked into a wonderful bread. That's why you want to eat whole wheat bread or whole grain bread. We're also going to take a look at some fair trade items like um, we've got some coffee here, fair trade. These are things I want to point out to you because they're so important for this mutually enhancing relationship that we really need to start harvesting and that we are really it's it's a growing segment of our population is looking toward organic foods and foods that are offered up and manufactured or grown with a fair, fair trade relationship and that means that the manufacturers have a very close relationship with all the farmers and you know what that means for you it means higher quality higher standards because they have a close relationship and there's a fair trade, a fair relationship, right relationship. And that's what we're looking for all the way along through this entire theme through this series is right relationship between our body, the earth, the growers, and all the many people that bring great food to you to nourish you. And let's not forget wine, especially when we're talking about pleasure, right? But there's a health component involved in wine as well. This is wine from Organic Vintners. Organic Vintners is a distributor and they distribute wine from all over the world. These wines are made from <laughs> all organically grown grapes. Now I have to take a beat before I say that because it gets kind of complicated. Organic wine has no sulfites and that's a labeling issue. So when we first had organic wines, you know, several years ago, the reason that they had the ability to label their wines organic organic wines is because they didn't have any sulfites. So they kind of got a bad rap, like a lot of people didn't think they tasted so good. Well, the distinction is that wine that's made with organically grown grapes does have a little sulfites in it, a very, very small amount. So what's happening is that you're getting a grape that is grown in pure rich soil without pesticides and herbicides. You have a tiny bit of sulfites. So what happens out of that? That equals great wine. So we won't want to forget wine. Now, a lot of things that I've been telling you might seem complicated, and I, and I know it can be, and I think that those are a lot of the issues for people that are wanting to eat healthy nowadays, because when you sh throw around terms like essential fatty acids and omega-3s and biodiversity and ecosystems, and I know for me when I first learned it was a little bit difficult. Not only that, recipes and, and the time it takes to shop and to prepare our foods, especially with the pace that most of us are living. I want to tell you that I understand that. I traveled for years as, as an author around the country talking about food and environmental issues and I had to learn how to eat healthy and well and stay in line with what I was teaching, you know, stay in the own integrity of my own message and, and cultivate methods in order to eat, my, eat really well, to feed myself well, to keep my energy up and that's how I developed Essential Cuisine and it was over a period of years where people said, you, you need to teach this. So before I scare you, I want to let you know that this is really all about simple. It might seem like a lot of foods at once and that's why we're going to break them down and we're going to show you simple and easy methods to combine these foods to make great meals that taste great and that you can entertain with too and have a good time. So let's get started.
And now the fun part. It's divine. I know I sound silly, but I just tell you how good that is. I just think it's fabulous. Mm. probably wonder what I'm doing here while I'm playing. <laughs> this is so much fun. This, these are all sea vegetables. And I am going to create a couple of things here that I like to always have stocked in my pantry. And that's what this segment's about. We're not going to really put it with any food or anything. We're just going to prepare it so that you'll have it on hand or we'll have it on hand as we move through some of these recipes. First of all, remember when I told you about sea vegetables, minerals, essential fatty acids. This is an incredible food source. It's my favorite way to eat them. You see we have dulse, we have laver, which is nori, we have alaria, kelp, sea kelp. Now many of you know about sea kelp because you see it granulated in the stores that you can buy it and use it as a condiment. And then we have dulse. I think I might have mentioned dulse already. And then we have a mixture here of sea vegetables called sea lettuce. Each one of these seaweeds, just like your vegetables, have a different mineral component or might have a different uh, vitamin and um, other nutrients component to it. And because of that, I like to take a little bit of each, put them in the blender, and make up my own mineral mixture. And that's what I call it. I'm going to ground it up. It's going to come in a bunch of different flakes. And they're going to have a lot of different flavors. So what I'm going to do later on is sprinkle it on my food. But first we have to ground it all up. And so, you know, if you do this like ooh, once a month and you have a nice big jar of it, you'll always have it on hand. And trust me, you will be so happy because what simpler way is there than to just sprinkle it on your food after you've made a salad or steamed some vegetables. And not only will you be giving yourself all of these minerals, but you won't even believe the difference in the taste. I mean, not too long ago I made a salad or something and I forgot to put the sea vegetables on and that's because I'd run out of them and I hadn't made any new ones yet. I was about halfway through the salad. I couldn't figure out what was missing. It was the sea vegetables. They really add a lot of flavor. So I've already taken quite a few of these and put them in this blender. And now I'm going to blend them. And then we'll get them all ready for the jar. I'm going to blend this, this portion that's in here now. And then I'm going to put the rest of these in here so that we have a nice big jar to take us all through the series. I want to show you something here. This is about the size that these are coming out right now. And I like to get them quite a bit smaller. Depending on the kind of blender that you have or if you have a Vitamix, which is what I have at home, and I'm not home right now, <laughs> but my Vitamix will make these so small. I don't get them to a small grain like salt, um, but somewhere in between these two. So I'm going to keep blending this and we'll bring them down to the size we want. But I just wanted to show you. Also, when you take them out of the package here, you might want to take a knife and, and cut them up a little bit so that they can um, start to blend a lot easier. If you use a Vitamix, <laughs> be prepared to have the dust from the, the sea vegetables go all over the place. It's really kind of fun. Kids will get a big kick out of it. We would actually, I would actually like to get these a little bit smaller. However, in this particular blender that we have here, um, we'd have to run it quite a bit longer and it's getting kind of warm. These will, these will be good and you'll enjoy them a lot. You can put them in soups, you can put them, sprinkle them on top of your vegetables. And I'm just going to pour them right into this jar. You don't need to refrigerate them. They'll stay. There we go, we got lots of them. They'll stay very well. And you'll have a great food source to add to any of your dishes. And you'll get an idea of how they taste, too. You'll start to get, you know, to see, find out what you like them for. But we call it the MM, mineral mixture. 
Now I want to talk to you a little bit more about something from the ocean and that's salt. This is one of my favorite salts and incidentally I'm going to introduce to you a lot of products. There might be other products that are of equally good value. These are my favorites and that's why I'm using them. And they also give me the opportunity to point out to you uh, specific elements about how they're made. This is Celtic, Celtic sea salt. It is the only Celtic sea salt. Often you might see bread or soups or any kind of foods that are made and they might say on their label and Celtic sea salt. This is exactly where it comes from. This is from the French Mediterranean where the salt is all uh, dried in clay beds in the sunshine, harvested without any chemicals or solvents or additives and it's not stripped of its mineral content. This is an excellent food source and I don't think you need to be afraid of it. What you need to be afraid of when it comes to high sodium is the foods that have these a lot of a huge amounts of sodium and salt in them and usually they're an iodized salt. They're not a salt that um, has come fresh from the ocean and dried in the sun and there's a big huge difference. This like I said has your minerals intact and the enzymes and everything in, in its whole food source straight from the earth. You will love this salt. I have many friends that call me after I've given this salt to them as a gift or gone over to their house and they've said, oh, we're just looking for things to make with salt on it because it's so good. I want to point out a couple different kinds that they have. And you'll find all this information on my website. This is Celtic sea salt and this is the uh, fine grain. And then they have the large crystals. So that's what this is. You can buy them in the shakers like this or you can get them in the bags. And I'll show you this. This is the fine grain gray Celtic sea salt. What I do, I love the shakers and they're great and they're great for traveling. But I keep a little bowl of salt all the time out where I'm making my food in my kitchen so I can just dip my hands in it and sprinkle it on top. You will notice throughout I don't ever cook with salt. I always use it as a condiment on top of my food afterwards because then I get this great burst of salt. Um, the third salt right here is flower of the ocean. This is a salt that's a little pricier and the reason being is that when these certain wind conditions come over the Mediterranean Sea the the salt harvesters go over and they take this salt, this brine that develops on the top of the ocean and they create this flower of the ocean. It's somewhere in between in its consist consistency to the fine salt and the the crystals and it is like it's like a dream. I'm not kidding you. If you saute an egg or you have some tomatoes and avocados and all of those wonderful foods that we love to put salt on, this is what you're going to want to use. These are excellent too, don't get me wrong, but this is very, very special to sprinkle on food. All right, now we're going to make a couple other things and we're going to move on to some seeds. I'm going to point two of my favorite seeds out to you and we're going to grind them in a coffee grinder so that they'll be again available for some of the dishes that we're going to make just like we did the seaweed. These are hulled sesame seeds and you're probably used to seeing sesame seeds that have a little bit darker brown on them and those are because they're unhulled and unhulled means they have the little shell on them. Well those shells are really actually considered somewhat toxic. Um, I'm sure it's not <laughs> really bad if you have some toasted sesame seeds on your sushi and different things like that. But if you're going to be eating a lot of them, if we make any seed milks out of them, we always take the hulls off of them. So these are hulled sesame seeds. They're nice and white. And I like to put them in a coffee grinder and grind them up into this soft powdery mixture that you're going to see with how we're going to use it on some vegetable sauces. So all you need to do is take a small amount of it. You don't want to take too many. If you get it too full, it won't grind good. And if you grind it for a long time, what starts to happen is it'll stick into the coffee grinder and it will start to make tahini. And that's really what tahini is. Tahini is ground up sesame seeds. And into like a butter, like peanut butter is ground up peanuts and tahini is ground up sesame seeds. And you basically just put it in your coffee grinder. You just give it a few swirls. You don't need to do it for very long, like I said, or it'll start to stick on the bottom.
That looks perfect. I'm going to show you this nice powdery mixture. See how nice and powdery that is and you'll get more acquainted with it as we move on. So I'm going to put it here into the jar and it's a very good idea to keep these in the refrigerator. And the reason you want to keep them into the refrigerator is because they're seeds and they're full of oil. And I'm sure you've heard of like sesame oil. Well, these seeds can go rancid over a period of time, so you want to keep them refrigerated. So I'm going to go ahead and grind a little bit more of these, and then we'll be back and we'll grind up some pumpkin seeds. Okay, so we have created a nice jar that will last you for several weeks, depending on how much of this you're eating, of course. Keep that in the fridge, and it'll be ready for some delicious sauces that we're going to make on that Swiss chard we have cooking. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to clean this out because a little bit of, little bit of sesame seeds, I already cleaned it out pretty good here with my hand. And now we're going to take some pumpkin seeds. Now look at these. This is another story. These are Syrian pumpkin seeds. Now for those of you who don't know about pepitas, you've probably seen pumpkin seeds in the store. They're a lighter green. These are Syrian. Syrian means that they are grown in Austria. It takes actually 33 pumpkins to yield one ounce of oil. So can you imagine even how much it would take to get a whole bottle of pumpkin seed oil? And I'm going to show you this uh, pumpkin seed oil in a while. But these Syrian pumpkin seeds actually in the 1700s were discovered and used for medicinal purposes. That's how healthy they are. And when I mean healthy, I mean they're a powerful functional food. They supply incredible essential fatty acids and other nutrients that are very good and uh, for, particularly for prostate health and for um, um, other, other areas of the body. <laughs> they are just a fabulous, fabulous food. And they're not so sensitive that you can't roast them um, slightly. They still retain their integrity of all their nutrients. These are wonderful to make into a powder and sprinkle on salads or cooked vegetables. And they have the most delicious flavor. You're just going to absolutely love them, whether you eat them raw like this, whether you roast them that we're also going to do later, or you grind them up. Now, look at this. Look at those beautiful color. Again, this or these seeds have a lot of oil in them. That's where you get your pumpkin seed oil. Again, you want to keep them refrigerated, but you can, you can just feel the hardiness in these seeds. Incidentally, you might notice here that we're using bamboo plates. This is a bamboo cutting board from uh, Totally Bamboo. You've probably seen these cutting boards in Whole Foods markets and Wild Oats and other, other um, Whole Food grocers. They're wonderful because um, bamboo is a, a, a totally renewable resource now. It grows so fast and it's so abundant. We don't have to cut down trees. We can use bamboo instead. These particular cutting boards and dishes have not been treated with any formaldehyde, so they have not been glued together with any kind of toxic element whatsoever. They're very safe to use. And are they beautiful? They're just gorgeous. I love them. So we're going to put this in a jar as well, and we're going to grind some more of these. These seeds have the most nutty flavor and sprinkled on top of a salad or vegetables, it, it creates a dimension of flavor that I'm sure you're not used to and that you'll absolutely enjoy. It's a great food source. And it's a great way to get these kind of foods um, into your kids' lives. First of all, if they don't like to eat vegetables, this will make their vegetables a whole lot better. And secondly, if they love vegetables, well, that'll even make them more better. <laughs> and then lastly, it's a great way to get these kind of foods because these are kind of might be hard for them to chew, so this is a great way for them to get this food. All right, that's a good enough amount for us, I think, for what we're going to be making today. We made our mineral mixture so that we have that ready for us to put on our salads. We have our sesame seeds. They can be put in your fridge, and we have our pumpkin seeds. We have great salt, 
And in the next segment, I'm going to introduce you to these incredible flaxseed oils. We'll put these together and voila, we'll have these great sauces on all those vegetables that are steaming. these bamboo um, ut utensils. These knives are sharp. They're completely made of all bamboo. No formaldehyde. Spoons are awesome. They're lightweight. I need to get the seeds out of the lemon because if they're blended they don't Good morning. Well, it might not be your morning, but it's morning for us up here in the Northwest. It has been raining for five days. <laughs> and so we decided we would start our series this morning with breakfast because we're all very hungry. And this is, um, this is a little bit more than just breakfast. It's kind of a day in the life of, of me, <laughs> Susan here. I have so many of my friends that ask me, oh, what do you make or what do you drink then or what's that? And so I decided to do a segment on just little snacks and kind of a day in the life of things that I like to put into my diet or into my breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. And they're quick and easy. And I use a lot of these great ingredients that have essential fatty acids that I was telling you about. So we're going to start with a drink that I make very often, which is just a bunch of water. I like to take at least a little bit more than half full in my blender because I make enough to maybe drink the rest of the day. And I put in a kale leaf. Yes, that's right, a kale leaf. Seems weird. Most people are used to fruit smoothies in the morning, but that's a lot of sugar for me. And kale is one of these vegetables that I don't cook a lot, and yet it's very high in calcium and extremely good for you. Um, and so this is the way I like to eat my kale. I also put parsley. Now I've already, I've already cleaned these off, the stems. I have a nice big bunch of parsley here. I have the Italian parsley. That's another thing that you just can't eat too much of because parsley is so great for you. It's such a great green, full of essential fatty acids and many nutrients. And then I use the juice of a whole lemon. And I've already cut up a whole lemon. I peeled it. And I'm gonna, you want to take the seeds out and just put the whole lemon in there and all these little pieces of greens and a tablespoon about of soy lecithin. Now, soy lecithin is like a emulsifier. It's, it's a fat from the soy, and it helps protect the, um, the sheath of the cell and keep the, the cell uh, lubricated, so to speak. It's a brain food. Um, our livers make um, lecithin, but this is another way to get plenty more of it, and there's many, many health properties to lecithin, but you want to make sure that you get a good brand. So we're just going to blend this right up, and when I say a good brand, you want to make sure it comes from a good source of soy. I'll tell you what the lecithin does too. It makes it really frothy and it gives it just enough fat in it to make it delicious. If you don't want lecithin, put a tablespoon of flax oil. Yum. It is just fabulous with flax oil. It's very lemony, so it's sort of tart and it's just green. Not too long ago, I made it for a friend who came over and um, he thought I was making like a sweet smoothie or something and he took a drink and he went, ooh, whoa, that's so different. But I love this. This is alkaline. It feels really good in my tummy, and it's something I, li I like to eat or drink upon waking, and I'll just sip it. I personally, I can't eat a lot of food when I wake up, so I, I kind of nurse my body along for a couple hours just having a few sips of things. Sometimes I'll take this in a thermos and take it out in the day with me and sip on it through the day. But what you have here 
is a couple of kale leaves and some parsley and a lemon, which is great for the liver, and it just tastes good and it's very refreshing. We're still going to be making some more of my favorite things. These are just quick and easy snacks with very good food with excellent benefits for your body and for your palate. I'm chopping some walnuts here that have been soaked and if you haven't seen my raw food series and you want to learn more about making great desserts and how to work with nuts and seeds, I highly recommend you get it because that'll go over the reasons why we soak these walnuts first. And basically I'll just tell you it's to get the enzyme inhibitors off. And when you soak them, you get this dirty, dirty water, and it's, it's really not dirt, <laughs> it's enzyme inhibitors. And that's why you can set nuts and seeds out on your counter for weeks on end, and they won't oxidize, they won't rot, because they have all these enzyme inhibitors. Enzymes are what help us digest our food and what helps oxidize our food and break it down. And that's why we want to eat enzyme-rich foods. That's why we're eating cultured vegetables, and that's why we're using raw milk. Now, I'm, I don't even have raw milk out here. What I have is raw kefir. Kefir has been, in this, that's milk that has been enlivened another dimension. It's um, full of friendly bacteria. In many cultures where they don't have refrigeration, they'll milk their cows and they'll just let their milk sit out and it will sour. It's a natural fermentation process. But what we do here, because we, we seem to always take it another level, is we actually use a culture. And those are these little grains of um, bifidus and acidophilus and different types of culture that are called probiotics. And the benefit of probiotics is that they, they build your immune system. Many of you, I'm sure, have taken antibiotics in your life. Well, antibiotics kill off the bad bacteria and they kill off the good bacteria. But we need that good bacteria in our intestines so that we have um, an ecosystem that is fully alive, like, like a stream that is healthy and that if anything comes in it, it's able to, to digest it and eat it up and, and absorb all the nutrients into your body. And that's the benefit of eating probiotic foods, particularly after you've taken antibiotics. Not to mention that I think they're absolutely delicious. Now you'll find kefir on the shelves of many stores and often it's flavored. And it's usually pasteurized, but it's still enlivened, and it's better than eating something that's totally dead. At least it's a step in the right direction. I make my own kefir as well, just with milk, and then a culture. And we are gonna be doing some segments. If you wanna learn how to make cultured vegetables, we're gonna make kefir and cultured vegetables. But for now, when you've got kefir in your fridge, and it lasts for a very long time, you know, for weeks, it'll stay good. And it's absolutely delicious. If you like buttermilk or if you like kind of a sour taste, it's yummy. The other thing we're going to use is raw cream. Now, this is 100% raw cream that is unpasteurized. Again, it's a food that is alive. And it's been um, taken from cows that have been grass-fed. So it's going to be as simple as taking some wonderful berries and pouring this rich and delicious food on top of them. And by the way, if, if um, you don't want berries, you just drink it straight from the jar and it's excellent. If you don't like the tartness, you can add a little honey or a little maple syrup. And I'm just gonna drip it. You can see how it's kind of curdled. And that's it. That's pretty simple, right? There's no excuse for not eating well. People think it's more expensive too, and it's not dollar for dollar if you aren't buying junky food anymore and you buy a lot of things in bulk like we bought these walnuts in bulk we're going to be using a lot of other seeds and grains all in bulk and this is this rich delicious cream this is so good and you should indulge in these once in a while and not worry about it because it's a very excellent food excellent for your digestion excellent for your skin excellent for your energy good fats are very important and we'll just sprinkle them with some walnuts that was a very simple, simple dish to make. And look how healthy it is. You're getting great berries, you're getting nuts and seeds with essential fatty acids, and some yummy live culture.
I love buckwheat. I use it too in a lot of my raw food dishes. This is buckwheat groats. Here they are in a jar. And I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, open this for you and put it in my hand and let you just take a good look at it. If you go to a health food store, you can buy this in bulk. And you can see these are these little raw buckwheat groats. And these actually sprout, if you can believe that. Now, they're just hard. See how they are? And, and you could go ahead and eat them this way, but they're, they're pretty kind of chewy. It's better to soak them. They only have to be soaked for about 15 minutes and they're soaked enough. Now these we soaked overnight and actually if I set them out and during the day and uh, actually they were set out last night to start sprouting but it's so cool here that they didn't sprout and that's fine we don't need to have them sprouted but they'll actually start to grow a little bit of a tail. Um, I, I use these to put olive oil and lemon juice with and ground up in the food processor and I actually make a dehydrated pizza dough or crackers out of this with some garlic and other seasonings. But this morning we're going to have it for breakfast. And I love it for breakfast because it's so hearty. Now if I were to make a smoothie, I, I like to put them in smoothies too because it will create a thickness. When, when these were soaking, and actually, I do have some soaking. And I want to show you these because it's important that you you understand some of these things when you start working with these so it doesn't scare you and you go, oh my God, what happened here? You can see that this is really thick. See how thick that is? It almost gets kind of gooey. Um, same with flax seeds. If you soak flax seeds, they'll get gooey. <laughs> and by that I mean like just like thick, like almost sludgy. And, and that's why they're good for binding things. If you use flax seeds that are soaked, they often use them in baking instead of an egg. Same with these um, buckwheat groats. If you were to put them in a smoothie, it will thicken the smoothie, especially when they start to ground up. So just remember that after you soak them for about 15 minutes, these have only been soaking for, see it even gets kind of foamy. They've been soaking for about an hour. And you can just rinse them in, in the colander here. And rinse them really good, let them drain, and then they're ready to eat, just like that. And they taste great. So I'm gonna put these here. these. Okay, so this is the way I make my breakfast. I take not a lot of these because they're quite filling. So I take about that many. And I'm going to set these over here. Then I add some coconut cream. I did this just like we did the fruit salad. And I took some coconut spread, coconut cream concentrate, and I poured some hot water in it and made a nice syrup. I may need to add a little bit more water, but we'll see. And that's only because I like to make it like a cereal. I'm going to put a banana in it, and I often make it with chopped apple. That's another one of my favorite ways to have it. But we're just going to put a little bit of banana. This will just take a moment here. And I like to put this in smaller pieces because I don't like just a giant bite of banana, because this is, this is a lot of food to bite. <laughs> Here I get in telling you how to eat it again. It's a big chew. And most raw food is, and most healthier foods, when you're eating foods fresh from the earth, they're going to be a little bit more of a chew. So it's important that you take your time to chew them, because that'll really aid you and benefit you in your digestion as well. I'm going to go ahead and pour that on. Now you see that made a nice soupy soupy consistency. Now I'm going to talk about protein powder a little bit. Sometimes I put a little bit of protein powder in it. And I use J-Rob's and the reason I use J-Rob's is because it's they have such a variety. They have a soy protein, they have a whey protein, they have an egg white protein, and they are very high in protein. They mix with water instantly and they're sweetened with stevia instead of aspartame or any sugar and they absolutely taste delicious. I think it says here um, on the label that it's out, outstandingly or remarkably delicious and it's true. It is the best tasting protein powder and they make little packets so I often will take this with me sometime like my pack and go and then all I have to do is get a water somewhere or a juice and it just mixes right up with a little shake or a little spin and I have a nice protein drink if I'm out in the afternoon and I need a little bit of a lift. So I'm going to put, I don't like to use a whole, a whole scoop. Um, 
a whole scoop is 24 grams of protein. I just use a half because it's a strong flavor too. And because when I say strong, this is vanilla, it has a strong vanilla flavor. And once more, it's sweetened. It's sweetened with stevia. And if you're not familiar with stevia, stevia is a natural herb that is a sweetener that is good for you. It not, doesn't have the negative effects like aspartame and some of your chemical sweeteners. So I just put a little bit in here, <laughs> partially because it gives me the protein and partially because it tastes so great. And it has that wonderful vanilla flavor. If you don't use it, you can add a little vanilla to this. So there we go. That's all there is to it. Then I have to have some flax. And if you saw one of the other f segments when I talked about turning this upside down, well, that's what I did, and I want to show you now why it works. So I'm going to take the top off, and let's, let's hope that it works really great. Oh, I did. See all the lignans there at the top? See how those are all there? I love the taste of these. So I like to have, you know, a nice little bit of it in my cereal in the morning. Now I'm just going to move those out of the way, let them plop back in, and then I'm going to pour my oil. And I'm going to take like a good tablespoon of the oil. There we go. And mix those lignans in. Not great. Now this has, you know, this is enough fat for a good breakfast, high energy, something that's going to last you throughout the day. If you eat this, you want to eat it at least a couple hours or an hour and a half before you do a workout. But this sustains me for the longest period of time, and it's so yummy. Let's clean this off. Okay, I'm going to put some walnuts on top and some bananas, and we'll be ready to go. Like I said, I really like this a lot with an apple. And when I use an apple, I usually only use a half, unless I'm making some, you know, for more people. But just one for myself, I just have a half. And I love it with banana and apple together. And in Hawaii, we have lots of papaya. I do it with papaya sometimes. I love it like that. You can also put flax seeds on top. And because you have walnuts, you've got another really good source of fat there. Let me break those apart. And that's it. That's really that simple. And we're going to make this buckwheat into another dish in our salad segment where we're going to make a salad out of it. And you can put all different, you know, completely different flavors with it. I'm going to put a little flax on this too. There's a great, very healthy breakfast. The benefits are buckwheat. Buckwheat are highly powerful for you. They have a lot of nutrients. All of these foods promote um, a healthy heart. Um, your immune system, they boost your immune system, they promote joint health, these fats promote joint health, your flexibility, and your immune system, and that's what you want to do. You know, I've heard a lot of people that will say they'll go out often, and, you know, that that's, um, they'll have something kind of junky or something, and they'll say, oh, it's a special occasion, we're going to have cake and ice cream, or they'll, they'll feed it to their kids. And, you know, the way I like to look at it, and it is wonderful to have special occasions and eat those special things, but, you know, our life is a special occasion. And it's a special occasion that every single day we have the opportunity to, to, to live it to the most. And, you know, without our great health, it just isn't nearly as much fun. It's never been as much fun for me. And I think that's why I got so involved with really realizing the power of food, because there's a huge power in food and you might as well be enjoying this wonderful taste and nourishing yourself at the same time because this is a wonderful opportunity to live this special occasion. <laughs> Enjoy. These are my favorite quick snack, easy, easy, easy ideas of just merging some of these great foods together to make a great meal. I'm going to put some avocado and tomato and basil on toast. And I often eat this for brunch, like if I have a smoothie or something like that in the morning, then I love to have this um, 
for my lunch when I'm really hungry. Or if somebody comes over, like a friend comes over, it's also something that's wonderful to make for them because it's tasty, it fills you up, and it's so full of good food. You know, you can't go wrong whenever you get the right ingredients. If you get organic food, good ingredients, good wholesome foods from the earth, everything will always taste good, particularly if you use good salts and you use um, cultured vegetables to complement the food. It will always be divine. It's the ingredients that matter. I'm going to grab this toast. Now, in this particular toast, I love olive oil, and I'm sure that everybody loves good olive oil. But for on the bread, and I know this is a pretty fatty meal, I'm going to put just a little bit of coconut oil. And why is that? Just for flavor. And is it really necessary? No. But you know me. I love all these different flavors. You're probably getting used to that right now, and you probably think, oh my God, I can't believe she eats so much of this fat. But it's not very much. It's really not, and I think that good fats are important because they're what keep your skin looking radiant and keep your joints flexible and help you to digest your food as well and keep you, like I said, essential fatty acids are essential because our cells need them to function properly, period, end of story. And the only place we can get them is from food. So you might as well start eating this and enjoying it. So a little bit of coconut oil. And then we're going to place these avocado. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put some basil on here first because it's a little bit easier to eat for me when I put the basil on first. And you'll notice some other herbs that I have here. I have um, cilantro and parsley. And I like to keep fresh herbs in my fridge at all times. And, and sometimes I can't eat them all. And um, so I'll, I'll always have parsley and then I'll get cilantro like once a week. And I love having fresh basil. And just start putting them on your food. You don't have to wait for a fancy recipe. Just start including them on all your dishes. You, you can't believe how much they enhance it. Even if you have like um, something that doesn't call for herbs. A plain salad. A couple of basil leaves will wake it up. And you just get this crunch of this incredible flavor. Oops. So we might put, um, you know what I'll do? I'll put cilantro on on one of these. And then we might chop some and sprinkle it on the top. But they always seem to fall off on top, so that's why I put them on the bottom. Sometimes it's easier to do things backwards. So it's as simple as laying the avocado down. And if you want to, this has got a little bit of a brown spot on it, so we'll use this one. There we go. Now you know tomatoes are being heralded as a functional food. Well, it's kind of a silly term, functional foods, if you ask me, because all foods are functional. But these have an added function over and above carbohydrates, proteins. They have an added function that is extra, extra good for you, and it's phytochemicals and antioxidants. All of the colors of your vegetables are the different antioxidants and different phytochemicals that um, are the ones that counteract your free radicals. And that's why it's so important to put them in your diet as much as possible. Because even if you're not eating bad food and you're Mr. And, or Mrs. Perfect, we're getting you know, toxins everywhere we turn. They're coming at us in our water, in our air, and in many of our substances in our, in our homes and, and, um, so, and just different areas of our lives that we're really trying to clean up now, as many of you know. So it's important that you're eating as many antioxidants and as many functional foods as possible. Now I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little salt on this first. Flower of the ocean, of course. And I'm going to do it again. You know, it's all in how you assemble it. It's not so much cooking for me as it is assembling. I remember a long time ago when um, I first started having dinner parties, and I would make food, <laughs> I'd make a big dinner, and then I'd sit down and tell everybody how to eat it. And everybody made fun of me. But to me, I just I had to have it eat in a certain way because that's what made it so good when you put certain bites together. So that's kind of what we're doing now. And um, So I was going to write a book one time about, okay, now that you've cooked it, how do you eat it? So I'm going to put a little bit more salt. Now you notice we have some cultured vegetables out here. I personally, unless it's a food that is, 
you know, like fruit or sweet. Um, but anytime you're using food and herbs, salads, whether you're eating even meat dishes or you're having fish or poultry, you should include cultured vegetables with everything you eat, even if it's a couple of bites. It will benefit your um, digestion process amazingly. So now we have um, our tomato. And remember those mineral mixture we made from the, uh, all the different sea vegetables? Well, this is your opportunity to use these because this will enhance this dish greatly. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on. It'll give this wonderful, like, salty flavor and the flavor of the sea vegetable itself. Okay, now I'm going to get really decadent. And I'm going to pour olive oil on the top. And let's just slice a little bit of this parsley. Your herbs, if you put them in water and put them in the fridge, they'll last for a long time. Now we're just going to put a little bit of parsley or a little bit of cilantro on that. So there you go. There's another great afternoon snack, morning brunch, lunch. And this is an easy pack and go too because you can always carry a t an avocado with you because it's in a protective shield skin that will hold it. You can grab a, a tomato and you can usually go to work if you've got bread there and you can assemble this sandwich very easily. I bet you wish you were here. I bet you've been noticing these beautiful candles I have out here. These are from Nirvana Candles. You can see them around the country in different oh, health food stores, gift shops, boutiques. I love the way these candles burn. They're the only candles I have in my house and they have a variety of different colors. They have their spa candles. They burn so beautifully with this tall flame as you can see in the, candle, um, in the picture here now. And you can find out more information about them on my website or you can go to nirvanacandles.com. Beautiful candles. Bon appétit! Bet you wonder what this is. Well, I'm going to tell you. This is coconut cream concentrate. I have a couple different kinds out here. Uh, this one particularly is from Wilderness Family Naturals. And this one is from Tropical Traditions. And I just want to point out to you some variations in the way that some of these coconut oils are made. Because a lot of people are afraid of coconut oil. They think, oh my God, coconut oil, I thought that was really bad for you. Well, the truth is that it's actually an unbelievably good oil for you. But somewhere along the line it got a bad rap because it's a saturated fat. However, <laughs> it does have saturated fat in it, but it's from a plant source. And it's been used in not, you know, it's been hydrogena hydrogenated and it's been used for all kinds of fillers and things like that over the past several years. And for that reason, that's one of the other reasons it got a bad rap. Okay, there is a, a huge amount of lauric acid, uh, an essential fatty acid that's very good for you in, this, in these fats. And they taste so good you just won't even believe it. So there's two different ways you can get them. You can get them in the coconut oil, just the oil itself where it's been extracted from the coconut meat. Or you can get it where in a spread where the coconut has been all ground together and to make a beautiful coconut spread, which is what this is. Now, because coconut oil is solid at room temperature, because saturated fats are solid at room temperature, you can see right here in this, uh, this oil from Wilderness Family Naturals that it's white like snow. And because it's cool here in the Northwest, it is all solid. So you want to have your toast <laughs> pretty warm so that it can spread because even, even this coconut spread here was kind of clumped together. I just want to show you this, how this was just kind of clumped together. So as soon as I put it on the toast, though, it melted right away, as you can see. Now, if you want to heat it, all you have to do is set it in a pan, 
with a little bit of water around it and then it'll, it'll melt and then it's a lot easier to use. Now where I live in Maui, in Hawaii, it sits liquid in my shelves. Now that might seem, oh my gosh, isn't it going to go rancid? No, it doesn't. This oil and the cream will last for years. And actually so far I know they have a several year uh, shelf, shelf life. So it's liquid and it can stay that way as long as you don't contaminate it with other food. And when I say that, I mean, if you were to put it, if, if you were to put a knife in there and it had some crumbs of the bread and you were to put it back in there and leave it out on your shelf, then that could contaminate it because pieces of the crumbs of bread could actually oxidize and it wouldn't be shelf stable. If you were to put it in the refrigerator, it probably would stay good because it's being cold, so it no longer has the heat to oxidize it. So I always take out a certain amount that I'm going to use, and I put it on my plate, or I put a little dish like this. This has got the coconut oil in it, so that I have it ready to use throughout the day or while I'm making, you know, a larger breakfast. And that way you don't have to worry about contaminating it, or you have to use special, you know, a separate knife and a separate spoon each time. So those are things to keep in mind, and there's lots more that you can learn about this on my website, but those are the basics of coconut spread and coconut oil. One more thing I want to say about the coconut oil is that they have different tastes. Some of them have taken the coconut flavor out, and some of them um, have kept it in. I love the flavor, and that's why I use these particular oils. This particular oil is my favorite. Um, Barlene's makes an oil too that's very good, and um, I love this spread. The Tropical Traditions, their coconut cream concentrate is also excellent. But there again, they're made differently. This is a centrifuge method with Wilderness Family Naturals. Centrifuge means when the uh, coconut meat is ground and when the separation is made from the coconuts, it is done with no heat. There is a slight amount of heat made um, used with this one. And this one is made out of dried coconut. So the coconut is dried first and then it is ground into this coconut cream spread. So if you're a raw foodist, then you, you probably don't want any heat to it. I know these are all very <laughs> much specifics, but they're things that are important to understand because they do affect the taste. So just enjoy them. Uh, and we'll be profiling them more in, in other parts of the series. So here's one of my favorite things. We're just making some toast and some different ideas of that you can do with toast and some of these powerful foods because these foods are excellent for you. Okay, where is our maple cream? Here it is. Remember we talked about maple syrup earlier? This is unbelievable. I'll let you look inside there. See, that's pure maple cream. I'm going to take a clean knife here and put this in. Look at that. And just spread it on the toast. Now, another way to do this would be to put flax oil if you didn't have coconut cream. Don't underestimate flax on toast. It is excellent, especially if you have a good source of flax oil. But this right here, you know, it's nothing fancy. All I did was put some coconut cream spread on a piece of toast and put on some maple cream. Scrumptious, great afternoon snack, great for kids. And I might say something else too about the breads. I'm using, let me put these up here so you can see the breads. I'm using French Meadow Bakery. We have a men's bread. It has the pumpkin seed in it, the flax seeds. It has, uh, I think, um, some soy isoflavins in this bread. This is the women's bread. I use these breads, and this is the hemp bread. The hemp seed bread is fabulous. It's got a high protein count and is full of omega-3, 6s, and 9s. Excellent bread. This one is one of my favorites. We're going to use it too later on when we make some breakfasts. This is their 100% pure rye bread with sunflower seeds. This is my favorite bread. I use these because I absolutely love them. And they're all organic, and they're baked in a way that holds the integrity of the seed. This time, I'm going to use some flax oil with some kimchi. I want to show you a trick about flax oil. High lignans, both of these have high lignans in them. They all float to the bottom, and I mean, there's a lot of them. They get like that thick. So what I do when I first get my oil and I first use it, I shake it a lot, and often the lignans have gone to the bottom. Now, I can feel these are like really stuck down there. 
So I loosen it up with a knife and then I shake it up and then I store it in my refrigerator upside down. And that way the lignans are all on the very top when I open it. And I just take out as many as I want and then I pour my oil. If I'm making a smoothie, I love the lignans inside the smoothie because they taste so good. And I don't want them just at the bottom when I'm all done with the oil. So this is the way I enjoy them. You can hear that noise. Let me show you what they look like. Oh, I should have brought this up and showed you. Well, you can barely see them on the end of the, on the knife there. Can you see them? They're thick. I could bring you a big clump, but I can't because I already stirred it. Oh, wait a minute. I feel one coming. Well, it falls off on the knife. But we'll show you another time after this is sitting upside down for a while. So now these lignans are all mixed up in there very well. I'm going to put the top back on if I can. There we go. And I'm just going to squirt it on the bread. You know me, I like a lot. Now the reason that's not coming out very good is because the lignans are getting stuck in there. So I just take a spoon. And pour it on. See how thick that is? You see that? Very, very good and thick. And those are the lignans. And this is what makes this oil so good. And don't be afraid. You want your, you want, it's good to eat your starches with a good oil, a good fat, because it's going to help you digest them. Okay. Just leave that there. Another thing about your flax oil, you want to make sure you get the lids on as soon as possible because we want the least amount of air to go in there as possible because they're going to last longer. And then you want to put them in, you know, store them in the fridge. But I store them upside down. Okay, this one I'm going to put kimchi. Kimchi is a cultured vegetable. It's um, got different flavors. This one has seaweed in it, I think. Uh, this is Celtic sea salted garden kimchi. What's yummy about these is that they have this great sour taste to them. And on a piece of toast with flax oil or the coconut oil, it's just the best snack. It's the best breakfast if you want a light breakfast. If you, if you work... Uh, somewhere where you have a kitchen and a refrigerator, I would highly recommend you store a jar of these. And then you always have them. You take some bread with you and you can have a, a bottle of flax oil or some coconut oil. If you don't have a refrigerator, coconut oil travels great. And then you can make yourself a nice piece of toast. Now, that's not anything really fancy. How quick and easy was that? And I guarantee you, it's awesome. We're all going to taste them here in a while and we'll get some feedback. So that's one idea. Now, another idea... And I'm going to, this has kind of got some juice on it, so I'll put that over there. This is my favorite bread. It takes a while to toast it. Um, I sort of run it through a couple times, and it changes flavor. If you don't toast it enough, you know, it's a little chewy. Now, this is cheese from Organic Pastures. It's raw cheese. And for me, if I'm going to eat dairy, it's going to be raw. And by raw, we mean it's not pasteurized. And as I've mentioned before, you can go on Organic Pastures website and read all about unpasteurized dairy. Now this one, I'm going to... You can see that if you had a, a cheese cutter, you might make it look a lot nicer. <laughs> but we're just trying to be practical here. I'm going to take a few slices of cheese. This is all organic. This means that the cows are fed only organic food. They graze on grass that has not been used any pesticides or herbicides. I'm going to use a little bit of flax oil. I'm going to try just this one just to show you a little difference. Actually, you know what's going to be good on this. We're going to use the coconut oil because we haven't used that one yet. And we want to get all taste. Now, this is the pure white coconut oil. There are some people, for medicinal reasons, for healing reasons, for losing weight even, that are putting um, four tablespoons of this in their diet daily. Don't be afraid of these fats. Now, you, you should check with your doctor, of course, if you're, if you're dra dramatically changing your diet. But I'm not talking about eating copious amounts of them. <laughs> but 
to get a good amount of good, the right amount of good fats in your diet daily is very important. So you can see because the bread kind of cooled down a little bit, this didn't melt instantly, but it will here over a few minutes. I'm just going to put some of this great cheese on here. And then I'm going to top it with some cultured vegetables. This is the Zing salad, and it's made of beets. This is a food that is alive, absolutely alive. It, this is so great for your digestion. Not to mention that it tastes great. You know, you, you get this creamy taste, this, this, this nutty taste from the bread. Then you get a, a sweet taste from the bread, actually, because nuts are sweet. And the flour has a, you know, it's a, it's a starch. And then you get this nice sour taste, and then you get this creamy cheese. Now, they make the cheese in salted and unsalted. And incidentally, there's many dairies around the country that do make raw dairy, and you just have to check them out on the internet. Organic Pastures is in California, and there's different laws for all the states, so you just have to check that out, and you can check on our, our website too. So we have three ideas for toast, using the fats, using great bread, and using some cultured vegetables. So there you have it, some simple and easy snacks, and what I have in the day of life, in the day in the life of me. Welcome to breakfast. I eat breakfast all day long, I don't know about you, but sometimes I do. We're gonna make some French toast. And the reason that I chose French toast is because I, you know, if French toast is not something I eat a lot, but a lot of people think that French toast is this big fattening thing or that it's unhealthy or something like that. But it's not if you use great bread, and it's not if you used great oils. And I happen to love flax oil and maple syrup mixed together. So I, love, I call it my um, flax maple syrup. And we've taken a range-free organic egg and we have been uh, soaking our bread in it as you might have seen a few scenes. And it's uh, right here. We've been soaking our bread in uh, this egg. And we're gonna whip it up in a little coconut oil because that's another reason I wanted to show you this. If you're making pancakes or you're sauteing anything like French toast, it is awesome to do it in coconut oil. As we talked about earlier, the benefits of coconut oil have this, this high heat point, so the, the, it won't ruin the integrity of the oil by cooking with it. That's why it's such an awesome oil. And on this particular recipe, we are gonna use the Barleen's flax oil, uh, not the bar, well, we are gonna use the Barleen's flax oil, but we're also going to use the Barleen's coconut oil. Now the reason is, um, I wanna tell you a little bit about their coconut oil, is that just like their flax oil, remember I told you that it's fresh pressed, so when you order the oil, that's when they press the seeds? Same thing with the coconuts. Can you believe this? When the order is placed, off to the Philippines they go, and they pick the coconuts then. That's how fresh it is. It's not within two days. It's not within a week. It's done right then. Another thing I like to do with French toast or pancakes is sprinkle some... Um, fruit on top. Now you can either cook the food or not, but I'm going to give you this example because it might be something you might want to use, particularly for your kids. When my son was young, he could not have any sugar and he couldn't have any preservatives or, or um, any chemicals at all in his food, and I had to make him all his desserts. So one of the most fun things he loved, and something I found very easy to make, was I would just make a piece of toast, pop a piece of toast in the toaster, and then I would take various pieces of fruit, oranges, berries, bananas, and I would throw them in a saute pan with a little bit of, um, at the time, what did I use? I must have used butter at the time. And then we would uh, saute it up and I'd throw it on the piece of toast and, um, and I'd also cook it in a little bit of honey to give it some sweetness and therefore he had a natural sweetener and some toast and it would, for him it was like eating a pie or something sweet and it satisfied that craving for himself. And, and that's what you can do too. And we, we mostly like to eat our fruit 
when it's when it's raw but this is just going to be a light saute and with this coconut oil oh, it's outstanding it's just outstanding i'm not kidding it just really makes a difference so i'm just going to prepare all these we're not going to cook them long so i'm going to wait and put them on when we're finished when the um, french toast is almost done so i've been soaking these for a long time so they're very gooey that's a great sound I've been soaking in this egg this whole time. So the bread's nice and soft, and I like to get every little bit of egg. Don't want to let anything go to waste. Okay, so this is cooking perfectly. I'm going to move it over just a little bit, and I'm going to start the fruit. That's the cool thing about having a grill. Oh, it's sounding good. You know, I wanted to tell you, too, a little bit about the knives I've been using. I wonder if you've probably noticed this Ken Onion Shun. Beautiful knife. This is a Damascus steel. It doesn't um, rust. It moves so well. It's so well balanced for the hand. I want to tell you it's the most awesome knife I've ever used. Ken Onion Shun. Ken Shun knives. There's a many knives, and uh, you probably see them often, but check them out on the Internet. They're wonderful. Okay, I'm going to put some coconut oil. I did that. Awesome. I'm not kidding you. It just smells so good. I know you know I'm not kidding you. We just took the grill away. We wanted to be able to give you a clear shot here into how we're making our sauce. Uh, I'm going to take this bamboo fork. These are wonderful instruments, and we're just going to pour that right on top. Oh, this looks so good. You know what's kind of fun about it, too? It has this kind of this tartness, even though... It's sweet fruit, but you know sweet fruit often, especially berries, they have a little tartness to them. There we go. And now for the flax. Now what you could do, if you were me, <laughs> I mix flax oil and some maple syrup together and I keep it in my fridge. I use it for different things together. I move that around and I'm just going to squirt this flax all over the top. Now the reason I like flax oil on this instead of butter is because I love the flavor. It's simply for flavor. It's another way for me to make sure I'm getting my essential fatty acids. And if you're feeding your children in the morning, this is a w great way for them to get it. And they're going to love it at the same time. Okay. Whoops, here we go. I'm just going to pour this straight on. We don't want too much because it'll overkill it even though you can never have too much maple syrup. You know what I call my oil segment? We call it a la oils, because it's all about putting the oils on top after we make the food. That's what we did with the um, vegetables. We put the oils on top, we put the oils on top after we cook the food, because these oils you don't want to cook with, so we put them on top. So we call it a la oils, just like a la mode. So, French toast a la oils. A la flax maple. We decided that we wanted to put some walnuts on top, and actually, I, I put walnuts on top of everything. I love walnuts. Walnuts are one of the nuts, other than flax seeds, that are vi very high in omega-3s. And that's why they're such an excellent nut for you to have. I carry them in my car. But the one thing you need to know about your nuts, all of the nuts that you buy, you should keep them refrigerated. Because... Remember when I told you about the omega-3 and how sensitive it is and how like flax oil needs to be refrigerated or kept cool and not oxidized? And that's the same thing with the nuts. They can go rancid just like the sesame seeds. So you want to make sure that you keep them cool. So I don't leave them in my car for long periods of time, but I'll definitely grab a handful and put them in a little bag and something to take with me during the day because they're a great afternoon snack. Great snack for any time. But this is really... There you go. Now it's uh, French toast, a la oils, a la walnuts.
Now I'm going to make some scrambled eggs and I know that everybody knows how to make scrambled eggs and many people make omelets and this is so simple you can just throw in everything and anything from the kitchen sink as they say into scrambled eggs. Well that's just all we're going to do here. I, I'm just taking some of the leftovers and some of the foods that we've worked with over the last couple of days and we're going to make a wonderful scrambled eggs breakfast. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to come up with a clever name for this and I actually don't have one. Ooh, I'm probably making some noise. Huh? So I'm just going to scramble these eggs up, just mix them up. And of course, you know what we're going to saute them in. That's coconut oil. So I have some right here and I've got the grill going. I've got a couple of pieces of, this is the uh, men's bread with all the nutty seeds in it. So we're going to put those on, uh, I'm going to have them all toasted. We're going to scramble the eggs and put them on top. And this is already sort of toasted, so I'm just going to place it here on the grill to warm it up. Now, I had this breakfast at a restaurant once. It was kind of similar to this, and it gave me the idea because, quite frankly, before I had it there and before I made it, I never thought of putting my sweet potatoes or squash, those winter squashes, that then when I have them left over, just little pieces. Gosh, it just makes the most beautiful color and just the greatest flavor in scrambled eggs. So that's what we're going to do because we have, remember we did a sweet potato segment and so we're going to use a little bit, or it's a yam, not a sweet potato, a little bit of cheese. We have some wonderful green olives that have a lot of flavor. We're going to put a little basil in it and um, a little bit of spinach that we had left over. So it's basically just a leftover. And I'm doing it so I can give you the idea of throwing these things together. Now, the way that I usually do my scrambled eggs is I like to put it on the grill, and I'm hoping it doesn't travel around too much here. And then I put in the other ingredients. Because if they get all overcooked, they're not nearly as good. Wow, look at that. And it becomes lightly scrambled. And I think that's the key to good scrambled eggs because you don't want to overcook them. When they're overcooked, they just they don't have the same flavor. Oh, doesn't that look beautiful? I love the colors. And the way that I'm going to serve it is right on top of the toast. Now I'm going to turn this grill off because these are done. I'm going to take this toast. And this one, I definitely want to put a little bit of, um, of the coconut oil on it. You know, it's starting to warm up in here. If you've been here with us for a while, we've, it's been so cold, and so we've had a, um, the coconut oil has been really hard, but as we can see as the day's moving on here and we're getting a little heat from the lights and the oven and this, this um, grill right here, then, oh, these look great. Then, um, then the coconut oil's starting to soften. Put this right there. Let's grab this plate. Oh, this looks so good. We're all really hungry too, and this is um, this is our last. I like to put the toast like that. Let me turn it around this way for you. And if you put the coconut oil on the toast, you'll love the flavor of this. Now, if you when you're cooking the eggs in the coconut oil, you don't need to use much. Remember, a little goes a long ways. So those wonderful flavors. Now I'm actually going to take the basil and I'm going to chop it or just kind of tear it here probably. Now I am going to, I am going to cut it. And just sprinkle it on top. Now you could use parsley and you could use fresh cilantro, whatever you have. I would just want to encourage you to keep fresh herbs on board because when you have them and you just use a slightly a little bit of a sprinkle of them you'll just get this great burst of basil flavor and it's the combination of those that are so yummy I'm going to put a little bit of our mineral mix put it around the plate there I want these to stand on its own some of our great salt this is flower of the ocean just sprinkle it all over there as much as you want again you'll notice I didn't put the um, the salt while I was scrambling the eggs. Again, we want to let these flavors just come to life all on their own to stand alone, but still have a combination together. I'll put some fresh pepper on that. Oh, does that look great? 
there you go. Or if you're having um, company and it was a Sunday morning, you could crack open a nice cold bottle of champagne and have a beautiful brunch. Bon appétit. This you're going to love. This is a great brunch dish. I got two pieces of toast going and I'm just going to put them on the grill here. We already slightly toasted them. I'm going to get them warmer. I call it pumpkin seed eggs benedict and it's really not eggs benedict because there's no hollandaise sauce but there's a pumpkin seed sauce and whenever I say it to anybody they go oh my god that sounds awful. You just wait and see. You must try it at home. It's really fun. Um, even my brother-in-law who's a very conservative eater he said I was pleasantly surprised, but when he was watching me make it, he thought, oh my God, do I have to eat something she's making? <laughs> oh, but he's a good sport, and he always says he's pleasantly surprised, so that's a good sign. I'm just going to spread it around here a little bit. Now, we've had some spinach. We do have some spinach over here that we just sauteed, and that just took a couple of seconds, so we're going to put this on top of the toast. I've got the toast warming right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to saute a couple of eggs and then I'm going to um, put the spinach on and then I'm going to put the ground up pumpkin seeds that we ground up in the coffee grinder. These are the pumpkin seeds, the Syrian pumpkin seeds. I know we've showed these in some of our other segments, but just in case you haven't seen them, these are the Syrian pumpkin seeds and we ground them in a coffee grinder and we made this great powder and that's the pumpkin seed powder here that we made. And you'll see more of it as we work with it. But I just want to let you know what, what you're in for. And then we're going to just top it. This is another a la oils dish where we're going to put the oil on top. And we're going to use the Syrian pumpkin seed on one of them. And we're going to use the uh, Barleen's Omega Man. If you'll recall, the Omega Man is flax oil, but it has the Syrian pumpkin seed oil in it. So it has this great flavor. You've got this nuttiness of the flax seeds and the, and the pumpkin seeds together. This is pure pumpkin seed oil, and although it's divine, it's also very strong. So I don't want to overpower the dish. I like it both ways. So that's why I'm going to show you both ways. I'm also going to show two different pieces of toast. This is the rye bread. Now the reason I love the rye, it's chewy, it's a little harder to eat, maybe because it's, it's a big pile of food. But this rye is the most delicious flavor. It's a very sweet berry, and it's got the sunflower seeds in it. And this is the hemp toast. So we're going to use the hemp toast um, for another one, for another nutty flavor. Okie dokie, I think this is ready. I'm going to put the eggs on. Now, I like to do this with the eggs over easy because I think what makes this dish delicious is, there we go, it's just a little bit crooked is that the, the egg yolks are runny. If somebody that you're serving this to doesn't like runny egg yolks, it may not work for them. Runaway eggs. This has just a little bit of a slope to it. Okay. I'm going to start with the, while the eggs are cooking, I'm going to put the bread down and grab the spinach over here. Now, because this has a, quite a bit of oil on it, I'm not going to put oil on the toast. However, you certainly could. You could put, I would put a light, just a light coating of the coconut oil. Because this is, this is what I mean by, you know, all of your recipes when they have so many ingredients, it's because all those ingredients matter. Everything together just makes an incredible flavor a combination. And that's why I, I like to use a little bit of this oil and a little bit of that oil because they all come together just so beautifully. Okay, I'm going to turn these eggs. You know, eggs are tricky. You always want them to look great, particularly when you're serving your guests. There we go, we didn't do bad. Okay, I think that's good enough. I like my yolks runny, I'm gonna leave them like that. I'm gonna turn the grill off. And we're gonna slide that egg right on there. 
Sometimes I put two eggs on top. If I know I have a hearty eater and I want to have lots of yolk, I'll go ahead and put both eggs on top of one piece of toast, especially if it's this big piece of toast, the, um, like the rye bread, because it's quite a bit larger. Okay, let me just push this here a little bit. There we go. There's the eggs. And now the fun part. We're just going to sprinkle this lavishly over the top on both of them. And it covers up the egg. but And, um, okay, this one I'm going to use the Omega Man. And because I, I don't want to squirt this, I'm going to use um, a spoon. Oh, let me get a spoon. This is a, a great kitchen because everything's so close. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, you just want to put this all over the top. And usually one heaping tablespoon is good. Look at the colors. Ah, this is so beautiful. And when that, when that oil mixes with the egg yolk, it's divine. And then a little coconut oil flavor because we cook the egg in it. Now this one, I'm going to pour, do the same thing. You can see the difference in the color. This is much darker. And we'll just take a little bit around the plate for effect. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of our mineral mixture that we talked about earlier, and I'm just going to give a little bit, just a little bit, because I don't want to take away for the wonderful flavors, because this particular dish, I love the salt. So the salt makes this dish. And again, it's all our salt. Salt's on afterwards. We don't cook with it. I don't cook my eggs and salt them while you cook them because what will happen is the salt will disperse and the whole egg will just have a different flavor. If you have the flavor of the egg in its integrity of its own flavor, the way that it, you know, it came from the chicken, <laughs> then you'll get that flavor and then you'll get the burst of salt with it. And that's the way I think they're just divine to eat. So there we go. We have two dishes, two different variations of pumpkin seed eggs been dip. Oh, that was so satisfying. <laughs>